Hi friends, and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and peaceful person. I'm also a huge history nerd. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share some of my very favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today in 1961, President John F. Kennedy issued an executive order establishing the Peace Corps, a new agency in the Department of State. The Peace Corps trains volunteers who travel to developing countries in Asia, Africa, and South America, where they live among local communities for two years of service. Let's reverse to better understand how President Kennedy transformed the Peace Corps from a bold idea into a prestigious program, which has now sent more than 235,000 Americans to 141 countries around the world. It was just three weeks before Election Day in 1960 when John F. Kennedy arrived at the University of Michigan after a long day on the campaign trail. It was two in the morning, and the Massachusetts senator just wanted to get some rest. And who could blame him? But when he arrived in Ann Arbor, over 10,000 students were gathered at the student union to greet him. The energy and excitement of these college students was infectious. So in the wee hours of the morning, JFK gave an unscripted, impassioned speech where he revealed his plans for the Peace Corps for the first time. He asked, How many of you who are going to be doctors are willing to spend your days in Ghana? The crowd's response? A lot of them would be willing. After JFK's speech, students organized a petition with 1,000 signatures to support the idea. Two weeks later, JFK formally announced his proposal for the Peace Corps at a speech in San Francisco at the Cow Palace, which, by the way, is an excellent name for an arena. Political opponents like Richard Nixon bashed the idea of the Peace Corps, claiming that young people would use it as an opportunity to avoid being drafted into war. Still, JFK won the presidency after a very tight race. Once JFK was elected the 35th president of the United States, he got to work fast. He asked his brother-in-law, Robert Sargent Shriver, to research if creating an agency like the Peace Corps would actually be feasible. But President Kennedy needed not worry. Democratic Party offices were flooded with more than 25,000 letters of support upon offer to volunteer. Only two months into his term as president, JFK signed the Peace Corps into existence, urging young Americans to use their skills and resources to help others. You've probably heard this famous quote from JFK's inauguration speech. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And with the establishment of the Peace Corps, young people, like the students who waited all night to hear JFK speak, could support their country by representing Americans as kind allies to the developing world. Peace Corps volunteers have worked to reduce malaria, promote tactics to prevent HIV and AIDS, and share sustainable farming methods to make sure that no one goes hungry. The efforts of these volunteers can't be understated, but if this sounds slightly too hunky-dory for global politics, you might be onto something. In the 1960s, the U.S. was deeply embroiled in the Cold War, which continued from 1947 to 1991. The Cold War wasn't a literal war, rather, it was a time of serious tension between the United States and the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union had already been sending trained teachers, scientists, and doctors to serve abroad, and as these two world powers dueled for greater control, JFK thought it might be wise to curry favor overseas too. Was he genuine when he asked Americans to do good for his country then? Well, of course, but it was also a smart political strategy to position Americans as generous, helpful, and allies to developing countries. To this day, Peace Corps members help teach English in the mountains of Peru, support public health in Ethiopia, and so much more. Last year, almost 7,000 Peace Corps members worked across the globe. But in March 2020, for the first time in the organization's history, the Peace Corps evacuated all volunteers from their host countries due to the coronavirus. It's a slow process to get volunteers back on the ground, but in December, 45 evacuated Peace Corps members participated in a virtual service pilot program. They reconnected with their host communities online, continuing the work they started before the pandemic. Hopefully, we'll see international volunteer programs like the Peace Corps back up and running again soon. But for now, we can reflect on the words that JFK left us before his tragic assassination in 1963. 
In our current moment of crisis, what can we do for our country? Now let's shift over to music. Today we have a very special guest, Caroline Kingsbury. Hi, I am Caroline Kingsbury, and this is my day in history, March 1st, 2019. I played my very first big show in Los Angeles at the Fonda. I was opening for this incredible artist, Aurora, and the place was packed. Aurora's fans were so welcoming and communicative and supportive. It was a dream come true to perform for them. Also, I met a famous actor after the show. I met Aaron Paul of Breaking Bad, and he was there to see one of the other openers, and I like awkwardly went up to him and talked to him for 30 minutes, and he was extremely nice. Again, thank you, MXM Tune, for having me. My name is Caroline Kingsbury, and my debut album, Heaven's Just a Flight, is out in April. Bye! And now for our final segment of the day, I'm going to go look into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a March 1st in my life. On March 1st, 2017, I was looking at concert tickets because I wanted to go see Cage of the Elephant when they were playing in San Francisco. Um, I almost bought $30 tickets that were all the way back in the venue. Like, I probably wouldn't have been able to see them. I didn't end up going because I didn't make money at that point, and I was too afraid to ask my parents to see if they would allow me to go to a concert. Um, but, uh, yeah, I love Cage the Elephant. They're still one of my favorite bands, and I think they were kind of my introduction to alternative music, and besides, like, people like Arctic Monkeys, um, Arctic Monkeys and Cage the Elephant are like two of my all-time favorite artists. Uh, yeah, I really, 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 really wish that I had gotten to see them in concert. Maybe one day. We'll see. Thanks so much for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you can come back tomorrow for more facts from yesterday. It's 365 with MXM2 new facts every day so don't leave too soon i'm gonna teach you stuff no it won't be tough gonna go a year till you've had enough it's 360